Okay, hi. Uh, my talk is, I'm Jackie Wildering, and my talk is a numeric compression algorithm for the HP prime calculator, which is code for uh, a program that runs on the HP prime that works on the old VCR plus. This is the, I don't know, how many people here have seen one of these before? Oh, yes. Or are curious about it? Okay. This is, sorry about all the registered trademarks and stuff, but they seem to be really picky about that sort of thing. <laughs> VCR Plus Instant Programmer. It was used, used a short one to eight digit code in order to encrypt television listings years ago. Now this started back in 1989 or so. It, each one of these codes that you would type in, and you remember these codes, these little mysterious codes that started appearing years ago in all the television listings, yes. and there'd be this little number yeah. afterwards. What does that number mean? How does it work? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Anybody, anybody here as a number head has to have been yeah. curious about <laughs> no, that. No, there's none here. You know, no, no, nobody here like that. Okay. I know, you guys are all here for the Mary Kay convention. Uh, <laughs> the Mary Kay convention? <laughs> yeah, we're giving away a pink Cadillac. Okay. These codes were in periodicals, different uh, things, TV Guide, uh, your newspaper, your TV uh, listings for the week or whatever that were included with your Sunday paper. Encryption is illustrated through a program on the HP Prime calculator. Mm -hmm. yes. I wonder how much they pay, how did they manage to ramrod all those codes into the, force all the publications to publish those codes? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, they actually sold, well, there's more about it in here, okay? Yeah. But they sold the devices, they sold the numbers to the uh, newspapers and eventually they bought TV Guide and became a huge industry. Yeah. So the tail yeah. wagged the dog, but so to speak. And the VCR button. makers. Yes, and the VCR makers, yes. And they licensed yeah. it to all of VCR. Yes, that's later. Okay. Uh, so the codes are, at this point, they're obsolete. They're nobody's using VCR Plus anymore because VCRs pretty much are out of date. We use DVRs and other devices now. And they don't use uh, the VCR Plus Instant Programmer Plus Codes Call Set. These are all trademarks of Roby Corporation, formerly Microvision. So I guess that's the legal part of it. Successors to Jumpstar, TV Guide, International, <laughs> Incorporated. System was invented back in the late 1980s or so by Dr. Henry C. Yuen and Dr. D Daniel S. Kuo. I read a little bit about this fellow. Very, very, very clever guy. Uh, managed to capitalize on just about everything and has many inventions that go toward the scheduling algorithms, not just VCR+. Plus. Overall goal was to make a recording program as simple as entering a code. You know, I guess a lot of people, not us, but a lot of people, <laughs> had trouble figuring out how to enter something really simple like type the number in, type the date, you know, and so forth, set up the VCR and make it start at a certain time. What it uses is a Huffman style encoding algorithm. Huffman style means they take a large amount of information and they compact it using the most common codes to, uh, the, to hash to the shortest numbers. So something like a short duration program, prime time, low channel number, early in the month might go to four digits or less. And if you do an example here, if we encode channel 2, 7.30 p.m., 30 minutes, that would be something like uh, a, a show, primetime show, not, uh, on the first date of this month, it maps to the code value of 59. If you have a longer duration, an odd starting time, a higher channel number, later in the month, it might go to a seven or eight digit code. So if you encode, say, channel 150 and so forth, uh, 3 a.m., six hours, uh, at the end of the month, it would map to an eight digit code. An eight digit code allows for then a maximum of 10 to the eighth power, 100 million possibilities. <laughs> so we have to say, how did they set the code up? Okay, 31 days per month. That takes, that's almost 32. So you people who don't powers of two, of course, <laughs> that's going to be a five-bit field. So let's take five of the bits and we'll devote them to the day. Zero to 31, we'll have an extra bit left over. You know, zero, well, one to 31, whatever, and, 30, and an extra bit left over for nothing. 288 possible starting times. That is, we're going to go every five minutes, 12 hours, uh, 12 per hour, 24 hours a day is 288 possible starting times. So we're going to start at the five minutes. 56 possible durations. This was kind of a weird choice, but what they did was they said 36 durations 
in five minute increments from five to 180. Okay, and then if you want to go more than that, well, we'll take it to the nearest 15 minutes. So those were 20 um, durations, 15 minute increments from 195 minutes to up to 480 minutes or three hours and 15 minutes to eight hours in 15 minute increments. Then they chose 192 possible channels. Now, I don't know about <laughs> you, the, but these days that's not enough channels. But no. 25 years ago when the system was first put in play, that was a lot of channels. No. That was that would cover your you know your entire cable system. Hmm. Now, internally, what I what we did to make the program here, HP Prime is using a couple of lists. Now, if you look at, I, I don't have a listing of the program here, but you can find it on your disk. L1 and L2 are doing a two-way mapping of the 192 time and duration combinations. So this is taking common times. There's 48 possible starting times. They go by every half hour, and then four possible durations, 0 0.30 minutes to two hours. And what they do is those are the most common times and the most common starting points. So this just gets you in the ballpark. These numbers get you in the ballpark. So they were mapping the most common times. They used this table and the values that they put in there to map and hash the most common times to the most uh, to the shortest number of digits. So it lists L3 and L4 then. There's special extra scrambling involved in seven and eight digit codes. And then list L5 is assigning a name to a channel number. That's something I added because we wanted to have a name so you could put it, um, you know, have a, a just your local channel, whatever it is, added to to list. Channel names are not shown on the VCR, any of the VCR Plus devices. And if we use the function, I created a function called list, and it just dumps those out. It dumps the numbers out. It's fairly straightforward. It just says L1 equals, you know, curly brace, bunch of numbers separated by commas, curly brace. Okay, the time frame of the algorithm, there's a little more history on it. The algorithm was set up to go for 100 years, from March 1st, 1989 to Feb. They were ambitious. March 1st, 1989 to February 28th, 2089. So those people who are using their PCRs in 2089 are going to kind of be a little... Oh. So it didn't repeat every year or anything? Then, uh, it didn't, no, it didn't repeat. That, that's, it's created different codes for each time, duration, channel, and day during each month and year. The six-digit codes were on a 16-year cycle. Seven and eight-digit codes produced unique for the whole 1,200 months. So the additional encryption then is, uh, so for example, a one to six-digit code for September 2015 would match the same codes for 1999, 2031, 2047, 63, and 79 for September of that year. The one to six-digit only. Seven and eight would be different. Additional encryption then was put in place so that people wouldn't be able to reverse engineer these things. Oh, you know, and that. make up the codes and so forth. So they totally control the code development. And Gemstar then licensed the code to the magazines, newspapers, TV guide, and so forth. And additionally, they sent out, they use worldwide licensing under the names G-Code, if anybody's ever heard of that, uh, Video Plus maybe, or Showview. Showview? Mm -hmm. Over in Germany, maybe? You've heard of that. I don't know. They still do. They don't still use those. Sure, no, no, no. But there's, well, 20 years ago, there was also some patent dispute about that. Yes. Yes. So here are some pictures of the uh, original programmers. A couple, it looks a little bit like, um, let's see. Where did it go? Oh, here's one. Here's an old one that I had. This is the VIP 8, the original. Hmm. These are uh, the VCR Plus. It opens up, has a little couple extra buttons up top. And I think the original program, like six or eight, something like that, it went up to the VIP 18, I think had 14 uh, codes available, or 14 programs you could store. So if anybody wants to, if anybody cares to look at one of those. Uh, another, mo or here's some guts, by the way, from one of them I took apart. But I was thinking, I wondered what would go on inside there. It's like a Star Trek communicator. Exactly. Yeah, it does. yeah. It's like a Star Trek. Oh, flip it open. Yes. Another um, type. Another couple of models. 
the VCR, uh, this is VCR plus VIP 18M with call set. If you were supremely Stupid. Uh, technologically impaired, <laughs> you could you could in, not even have to program in the, the numbers, you could dial a phone number and pay them a fee and they would, you put your phone up to the bottom of it and it would program the device through the phone. No. <laughs> no. So, if you, you know, so if you didn't want to do any of this, you could get them to program it for you. So that inspired the song Money for Nothing. And by the way, for those of you who are interested, over on the prize table. Oh my. <laughs> put one of these out of the prize table just as a just as a bit of memorabilia for you. Now the another model they had was called the control tower. And this was uh, looks like this. That's a little device. Another other ones that they licensed. Uh, VCR Plus programmable device was pro, uh, Panasonic Light Tower was another example. And did many remotes had this built in, and they actually built them into the VCRs as well. So you notice the little, I don't know if you can see it up here, there's a little VCR Plus symbol down here, and another one over here. So the history, a little more on the history on these. These were published in the TV listings starting about March 1989. They ceased publication in May 2010. Mm. These were, at the, at the height, they were in uh, 500 or more periodicals. I just took one of the brochures from 1993, counted them, there were 500 more. They said that there was, oh, I think, over 1,000 worldwide, probably something, I believe, over 2,000 worldwide with all the show view and G-code and so forth. The original U.S. patent, which I have a copy of on the uh, directory as well, patent uh, here from 1994 and it was called an apparatus and method for using compressed codes for recorder program pre-programming. Uh, Gemstar eventually bought TV Guide from Rupert Murdoch in 1999. They got, they, this thing got rolling so much they were selling the codes to newspapers, they were selling, they were selling the devices, they were licensing the products to uh, the manufacturers of various uh, VCRs and control devices and so forth. They ended up buying this for 9.2 billion in Gemstar stock in 1999. 9.2 billion, they bought TV Guy. Unfortunately, right after that, the tech bubble went oh. And at the time when they, they, had been, they ran it for about eight or nine years and then they sold it. In 2007, they sold it to Macrovision for 2.8 billion. So hmm. they, but they said so they still made these these uh, fellows a fortune. Plus code. The reasons it was discontinued due to digital video recorders. You've got a schedule on the screen. This guy's got a patent for some of that too. By the way, the scheduling algorithms for the screen. Yeah. Cable networks uh, have a thousand or more channels now. You've got you've got. Uh, <laughs> Newspapers are down in circulation, and when we converted from analog to digital, the problem was there were additional channels. So you had something like channel 3-1 and 3-2, and so again, you couldn't handle that with this out with these algorithms. And uh, when we went to streaming video services, how many people here use Hulu and Netflix and all that? Uh, you know, to to get their information. So with all those factors. It's, you know, there's just, it's almost no point. But the algorithm was still interesting. Uh, consumers, if you want to use this, if you want to continue to use your VCR Plus device, I mean, and, and you just have to have it, www.vcrplus.com has the code. VHS recorder. Yes. Uh, I don't know. You have to sign up, but I never signed up. You have, to, you have to go in and sign on, put your name in and so forth, and then I think I, I think you can ask it for codes. They they did used to have a phone service where you called them up for 95 cents a, P, a minute, I think, and you would be able to ask them for codes. So that was during the height of the... So, I mean, somebody got a good idea, and I, and I, I do not fault these guys. They made a heck of a lot of money. You know, and they made a, a heck of a lot of money on a great algorithm. I will say it's it's a, it's a very very interesting algorithm. If you want to, if you look beneath the surface here, you'll see some interesting things. 
And I go, oops, I'm sorry. It went blank. Okay, there we go. Uh, the original paper that was written on this was by, um, I'm sorry, the original Cryptologia, it was written in crypt, is put in Cryptologia by Kurt Welch, Ken Sheriff, um, and this, you started with a code, and what they did was they sent it to a multiplication, which was a mod 10 remainder multiplication by this number, but it turns out that this number is really just 1, 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 plus 3, 1 plus 2 plus oh. 3 plus 4, so forth, all the way through to 1 plus oh. through 8. See, it's just the top, so they, it was just the looping that did that. Then they took the bottom three digits, sent it to a mechanism here where they subtracted 1 and divide by 32 to, and then add 1 to get the day. And then they took the top digits, sent it to an offset loop, mixed it with the remainder from this, added in the day cross that multiplication by <coughs> month plus one, added it and got bits here. Then they took the bits also from this output, scrambled them together, and got the channel and the start time and the duration. And that's just the one through six um, digit codes. I'm not going to go into a lot of the fine points of that. You can investigate it further through the files that you'll find in the on the disk. Uh, the program, uh, the, the HP Prime program, takes the year, month, and the code, passes it in through a program called, uh, this is the main program called decode, then it passes it to function one, which strips the, does that 68150531 multiplication, and then passes that to M, mtop, which uh, does the does this portion, maps the top portion, and then it passes it to shuffle and one called twiddle that I went by some original names from another from a, another source here, but it takes the bits, shuffles them together, and does a little dance with them, and then out comes the code, year, month, day of week, starting time, and so forth. The opposite way, you can put in the year, month, day, start time, program length, the channel number, and you get the encode, it, go, it goes through encode, the inverse of twiddle, the inverse of uh, interleave, the inverse of map top, and the inverse of function one, and out pops the code hmm. that you could use. Cool. And of course, if you can figure out how to do this, you can figure out how to program your VCR. <laughs> so <laughs> so in, in some interesting coding techniques. The original code is just done by, uh, is unmasked by performing repeated additions of the digits to form a unique new number. That's the, uh, that's the original, that's that mod 10 no carry multiplication no. Uh, with that code number, but it's done instead by just looping. Length looping is, what they, is what's used to make sure that the number that pops out is the same length as the original. So if you put in one, two, three, four, you don't get zero, one, one, one or something. You get another four digit number out. The original paper by Sheriff Welch and Andy Kinsman describes this as a mod 10 no carry multiplication using a key 68150631, but that's just the remainders, as I said from the earlier from the hmm. 1, 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so forth when you're adding it together. The, here's an interesting technique I used uh, HP Prime program n equals reverse ASCII string code minus 48. I parse the digits into an array. So I put in a one to eight digit code and I used, I figured this out to parse it in, in a very short line. It parses it into a, uh, an array. And then I can reverse the array with expression character reverse n plus 48. And it does, it puts it back into a number. So I needed to take the number fragment it, deal with the individual parts, and then put it all back together. So that was kind of neat. This is, uh, and decoding then, I used L1 to map the uh, codes to the time slots, and then I reversed the time slots to the codes with L2. Uh, map mtop is doing the mod 10 no carry multiplication as a loop. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple extra tables, L3 and L4, to take care of the seven and eight digit code numbers. I used a bit and when I was doing that bit rearrangement. As you saw in the earlier picture, 
where they chose, where they took the bits and messed them around, the channel bits and the time bits and so forth. And then the, uh, I used the choose command to decide between decode and encode on the front end. I used the, uh, the fairly simple, uh, I used a screen size, but I noticed that when I went in from different screen size or different applications and I called the program, the, whatever application happened to have been running before might have a different set of parameters for x min, x max, y min, and y max. Mm -hmm. I noticed that the new one that just came, that just added in the solve application, I think, had a different setting for that. And I had come out of the, the, the x min, x max, and so forth were a different value. And all of a sudden, all of my numbers were pushed over to one edge. And all of my output boxes were pushed over to one side. So I had to fix that by saving x min, x max, y min, y max in a separate variables and then calling them back when I was finished. Well, there's, there's also the set of underscore p commands that are the pixel based ones. Okay. So that's always going to be consistent. Oh, ah, okay. It's Cartesian. Okay. It's really I designed more for like if you're trying to make something that will draw on a graph. Okay. Type thing, so. Okay, so maybe that would have been a, a better place to focus it then. You know, maybe that would have been a better way to do that. Um, I used rec RECT and text out commands then to draw the, the boxes and then the freeze command to display the output when I was finished. So it looks something like this. That came out strangely. Okay, uh, the, if, if you, the program's called plus and when you, when you type it in, it opens up a screen, a set plus, decode, fun, and so forth, these different programs. You choose, and if you press plus, it'll give you a choose menu. You can choose decode or encode. This example chooses decode. So I type in a year. You have to know the year and the month, and then the code is entered here. Hmm. So when you do that, for example, enter 2015 and 9 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then the VCR uh, gives me a code of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and it explains that that is on the date of 921. It's a Monday. Uh, it starts at 2:10 p.m. ends at 2:35 a.m. and it runs for 25 minutes. And its channel is 96. I <coughs> gave it a name of PAL for something, you know, just for fun. Uh, the opposite with the encoding program. Same thing here. Choose plus. Instead, you choose encode, and you get a list like this. It says year, month, day, start, length and channel, and you enter these items, just make sure that when you enter the, you know, you check the values down here, the little prompts to tell you how to enter these. And if you type that in 2015, 9, 21, 210, 25 minutes, and 9, channel 96, it'll give you the same information we found before hmm. from the decode. And I tried this extensively to make sure that encode and decode worked so some mm -hmm. notes about this, you made the, the year, 1989 to 2089, month goes from 1 to 12, code 1 through uh, 999999999. It's valid from actually March 1st of 1989 to uh, February 28th of 2089. <laughs> I don't know why they, just did, they did it that way. Uh, the year and month goes from uh, 1 to 31. The starting time, 24-hour format with uh, 0 to 23 as the hours and month uh, minutes are 0 to 55 minutes in 5-minute increments. It'll round up, I believe. It'll round it off for you if you don't. Uh, encoding program is HHMM, 0 to 8 hours, or MM, and MM is 0 to 55 minutes. Uh, the encoding program can be in 5-minute increments uh, up to 3 hours, and then 15-minute increments from 3.15 up to 8 hours. The encoding channel range goes from one to zero. I'm sorry, one to 192, and out of range arguments will be set to either a one if you go negative or zero, and 192 for max. You can create some codes that will give error code or error date on the real devices. So if you you know you can plug you can plug in there September 31st or something, you know it'll yeah. it'll give you a code. But you, when you try to go put it on a real device, it'll tell you that's no good. Yeah. Okay, some final thoughts. Uh, originally, I attempted this on a 50G, but it was kind of slow and difficult to, to run it correctly because you had to run all the pieces, parts uh, in order. The Prime program is actually based on a 
the public domain program called VCRPP1.C, so I don't think they can complain too much. This has been in the public domain for at least 10 years. Hmm. Uh, and it's, it's I, I give you a source on the, uh, on the references here. So it was originally a program that was written in C programming language, although I did, you know, I kind of worked on this for about 20 years off and on. Uh, I also improved this program uh, to one called VCRPP2. Uh, I corrected some things. There were some high channel numbers that weren't correct and a couple of other minor points of the program. The paper uh, is, is listed, de decoding a VCR controller code. Um, you can also use the individual functions within the PLUS program, such as DO, day of the week, DOTW, and put in the values and get today's date, 926, 2015 is Saturday. You can, uh, if you have a real VCR PLUS device, so if anybody wins that thing and wants to start punching numbers into it, if you punch in more than 200 codes, it actually locks up. <laughs> Meaning, yeah, that's, that was another it. preventative they put in there so that people would just sit there and punch codes and then, and then call up the, hey, my thing doesn't work. What happened? Oh, I was punching it. I mean, it just locked up. Oh, okay, well, take out the batteries for about two days and it'll come back you online. Tell you're watching too much TV. You're watching too much TV. <laughs> to get in life. Yeah. There's also, I, I found out there's an entirely separate group of another 100 million codes that they only go for one day and they start with a zero. Hmm. So you zero and seven more, oh, up to zero. seven more digits, or eight more digits will actually give you uh, some one-day codes that actually have one-minute increments, and strange increments, things like that. I don't know what those are. I don't have an algorithm for that one. Um, I, these, are, these can be considered collectible electronics. You'll find them at garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, eBay, if you have any further interest in them. You know. But again, it's kind of an obsolete uh, device. Collectible? Oh, interesting electronics. Doorstops. <coughs> doorstops, okay. Well, they're doorstops. I guess you're not collecting. They were high tech in their days. Why would somebody want to collect something like that? Yeah. yeah. I was trying okay. to figure out. That's it. My references and uh, any questions? Thank you.